Hi, I'm Dave and I'm out at the Indian Creek Nature Center to talk with you today about milkweed. So why do we want to talk about milkweed? Well, when a gravid monarch female lays an egg, the only plant she will lay it on is a plant in the genus Asclepius, which is milkweed. It's the only plant she'll ever lay on. And when her little egg hatches on that milkweed, the only thing that that caterpillar will eat from hatching time to pupation is milkweed. When a caterpillar is feeding and growing and moving towards maturation, which is about roughly a two week period, it will consume 200 times its weight in milkweed, which is about the equivalent of a complete four foot milkweed plant. So even though you don't have to keep that much milkweed on hand at all times, you do need to have a source in case you run out. When you're gonna go out and collect milkweed, the first thing you need to know is what is milkweed? This is common milkweed, or Asclepius syriaca. Uh, there are several other species of milkweed in the area in which we live, but today we're going to focus only on the common milkweed. So when you get out in the field, there are other plants that can mimic milkweed, such as a young cup plant, and most especially a plant called dogbane. Uh, this is what dogbane looks like. And even though the leaves are longer and they definitely look a little different with the red stems, it's still easy to confuse these, especially if you have swamp milkweed, a different uh, species of milkweed. And the thing about dogbane that really does confuse people more than anything is if you break off a leaf, you will see the white sticky substance very similar to milkweed sap. But just be aware, dogbane is not in the Asclepius family and you cannot feed it to your caterpillars. They will not eat it. One of the other main things you need to be aware of when you're out in the field searching for milkweed is other plants that are actually harmful to humans. They're called noxious or even toxic weeds. Uh, these are plants like wild parsnip, poison ivy, uh, stinging nettles. All of these things will make for a miserable trip to find milkweed. So you wanna be aware that you're very familiar with those plants. And in the case of wild parsnip, there are a couple of other plants when they're blooming look very similar. And that being wild mustard and golden alexander. So when you're out in the field collecting milkweed, focus on common milkweed, leave everything alone. And as long as we're on noxious plants, we do wanna mention that the sap from common milkweed actually is an allergen to some people. So if you've never dealt with milkweed before, it'd be a good idea to wear gloves for the first time around just to make sure you don't react to the sap. So the best way to collect common milkweed is from an area that you know is safe, from your garden, from a neighbor's yard, even maybe from a pasture on a farm where you know there's been no sprays and you know the farmer. But you want to definitely stay away from plowed farm fields, stay away from roadside ditches that could have been sprayed, and even, I recently found out, stay away from golf courses. Uh, a lot of the golf courses, especially in eastern Iowa, have gone to native prairie plantings, which is a great thing. However, the milkweed that grows right next to the fairways actually can have a lot of spray on it. Uh, they just spray the fairways, they spray the farm fields, they spray the roadsides, and the wind can very easily drift that spray onto the milkweed leaves. And again, if you feed contaminated leaves to your caterpillars, chances are it'll kill them. So just be careful of that. So to sum things up, here are some things that you would want to do and you don't want to do when you're out collecting milkweed. The first thing is never go onto a property without permission from the owner. Secondly, don't collect from roadside ditches, farm fields, or golf courses, or any other area that could have carryover drift of insecticides or pesticides. The third thing is, always make sure you're properly dressed to go out in the field. You want to wear closed-toed shoes and socks, long pants, uh, long sleeves, and if you need to, gloves for protection. The fourth thing is, always make sure your hands are clean whenever you're handling leaves that you're gonna to feed to your caterpillars. Things like soap residue, uh, insect repellent, sunscreen, lotions, any of that stuff, no matter what it says in the bottle, can be very harmful to your caterpillar if they're on the leaves when you feed it to them. Uh, the next thing is, 
always inspect your leaves. As soon as you pick them, always inspect them to make sure there isn't actually a monarch egg or caterpillar already on that leaf. Because if you're in a milkweed patch, there's a pretty good chance that a female butterfly may have visited that before you showed up. So always make sure you do that. And then always thoroughly rinse your leaves. Once you've inspected them, rinse them in cold water, no soap. And once you've rinsed them thoroughly front and back, make sure you pat them dry with a clean detergent-free towel. If you put a leaf in there that still have droplets of water, it's very easy for a newly hatched cat or even a first instar cat to drown in one drop of water. So you want to be very careful about that. And one other tip before you put them away is you can take the leaves and take a little piece of wet paper towel, not soaking wet, but just damp, wrap it around the ends of the leaves and it'll help them retain their moisture. They won't dry out quite so fast. Then you can put them in a resealable bag like my biodegradable bag here and put them in the refrigerator and they're ready for feeding. Okay, so that's about all we have for you today as far as milkweed goes. Um, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to get a hold of the folks at the Nature Center or you can contact the people at the Monarch Zones Research Center here in Cedar Rapids. And for that matter, there's always good information on the internet. The important thing is make sure you enjoy your caterpillar. This is a great opportunity to, to educate friends, family, and really anybody around you in the ways of the natural world. And anything we can do to help out nature, we certainly need to do.